Walks are just about the hardest things to animate. That logo took us nine months to animate. I had designed it as a logo for the cover of my book to show the different styles of animation, but I never would have done it that way if I thought I was going to have to animate it. But we did. And these DVDs are about learning the animation systems and principles to enable you to animate walks or anything else you want to, from the very basic to the most sophisticated. The methods will apply to any kind of animation, whether it's CG, 2D, uh, stop motion or games. We'll be learning and we'll be relearning the basics and we'll build upon them layer by layer by layer until we master them. I think there are two kinds of animation, aren't there? There's the first thing any, any student does, or you draw as a kid in your school book, in the math book or something, you animate little figures in the bottom and you change, tend to change one thing into another, isn't it? You morph from, I mean, or, or any student film, they have a tree turn into a frog, into a woman, into a car, into an airplane, into whatever. All animation is based on change, I think. So you're changing one thing into another, and that lasts about five minutes, and then you can't stand it anymore. However interesting it is, you just unplug after five minutes. And the other kind of animation is drawings or images, computer images, that walk and talk, which that will sustain for, for 100 minutes, 72 minutes if the kids have to have a pee, isn't it? That's the sort of rule. So obviously we're gonna, cha we're gonna choose images that walk and talk. So change still, as we'll see over these four days, change still applies to everything we do. And, and all this, these methods, I'll show you of, of limbering things up, is what you do is you get more bang for the buck within the movement. You're gonna have more change. And you can use these things in the most crude way, or you can use them in an extremely subtle way. And for the computer animation, as, as far as I can see, the great thing about the computer uh, uh, animation is that you can be incredibly subtle. You can do tiny moves. So this is, you use the same method, but you use it incrementally tiny, or you can use it very broadly. I learned what I know from some of the great animators of the golden age of animation. They invented the systems and methods that we're going to study in these 16 DVDs. 
Unfortunately for me, I had to learn it the hard way over years and years. I ended up employing some of my teachers in order to learn from them. And others were just friends, like the genius Milt Call. Milt, um, he was so good that he was faced with an awful lot of envy. And he just made it worse by being utterly honest. He was honest like a child is honest, which was terrifying. I mean, he would, he would say, you can't draw your ass. And one of his friends came back with a, an hour later with a fully rendered drawing of his ass. <laughs> but he would blast off at everybody. And, and uh, he was known as the king, King Call or God. And God would yell at you if you didn't have the stuff right, you see. Well, when they write the books on this stuff, they try to underplay him and they kind of damn him with faint praise. Although he, had, well, we're going to him later. But they had a picture of him. It says Milt Call with the great, you know, the nine great animators or something at Disney or something. And it says Milton Call, uh, sophisticated use of the basics. Well, th that sounds like a put down. You know, what else is there, I ask you? I have never found anything that wasn't the sophisticated use of the basics. Everything I've ever done, and I was considered an innovator for a lot of the time, it was all based on the basics. And the more I learned about the basics from these old birds and understood them better, the more my sophisticated invention would occur, but based solidly on the basics. I really don't think there is any more. In these sessions, we're going to study over 400 specially animated examples. We'll begin with basic stuff like the bouncing ball and fundamental things like timing and spacing. These sessions are about how you learn and what you need to do in order to learn. You can just dip in and out of some of the different subjects like walks, accents, vibrates, dialogue and anticipation. Well, at last you're home. But I recommend you swallow the whole pill. Start from the basics and then move on layer by layer through to the sophisticated use of the basics. We'll be showing how to think about animation by showing pose positions and then full animation. We'll show how to animate and also how not to. What this is, is to get limberness, you get this. To get snap, you do that. And, 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 and you build it in this craftsman-like way, like a carpenter. Dowel joints. Don't hit the nail that way. Hit it, you know, hold the thing this Anyway, it's all like that. However, a, a great actor, movie actor, who's a great character actor, uh, called S Scott Wilson. He's always, he's one of those guys that when you see him in a movie, he's always looks completely different. And um, he took the course in, in, in San Francisco, and, to my, and I was saying, of course, I'm sorry, Scott, there's nothing in this three days here of, about acting. And he said, are you kidding? He says, the whole thing is about acting. He said, what you're showing us in these things is exact equivalent exercises that we actors do when we, when we go to acting school and when we do workshops. Precisely the same thing, it's all acting. Oh yeah, well, I just, I went to Disney when I was 15. I, I, I got on a bus from Toronto and it was like four days, five nights, you end up in LA. And I walked up and down the Disney fence for a month <laughs> trying to get in. And they're making Alice in Wonderland at the time. And, and they let me in and they were very, very kind to me. They did, even did a story on, 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 and I could draw those. I was, I was at the Roger Rabbit level for drawing, not for anime. I mean, I had no idea about animation, but I could draw that stuff. And uh, Dick Kelsey, who was, a design, uh, was designing Hiawatha, he was one of the 40s uh, stylists there. He's a very nice guy. And I said to him, oh, I want to be a, you know, I want to be this animator. I want to be a really good animator. And he said, yeah, yeah, he said, look, he says, just forget about the animation. Go and learn to draw. And I said, but I, you know, look, look, I can draw. He said, no, I don't mean cartoons. Learn to draw. 
So I just concentrated on painting and drawing until I was about 22, living in Spain, and I realized, wow, what you could do with animation. For the computer animators here, life drawing might not seem relevant, but a lot of computer animators draw rather well, although a lot of very good computer animators don't draw at all. But here's what you learn from life drawing. You learn where the weight is. You learn where to place things. You learn proportion. You learn clarity. And you understand how things are put together. It broadens your range. It's like working out in order to get fit. The worst thing you can do is to try and get good drawings. What we need to do are intelligent scribbles. You're gaining knowledge when you do it. There's no substitute for it. And for all of us 2D animators, drawing should become second nature so that we can concentrate on the actual actions and the timing of them and give the performance life. Ask a model to move through a series of quick related short poses. Use slightly transparent paper working from the bottom of the pad up so that you can see where the previous drawing was. The poses should last 30 or 40 seconds, so there's no way you could do fancy drawings. You just have to try to catch what's happening. It's a terrific way to study action and weight. I'd already met Ken Harris, and Ken Harris was my first teacher and remained so for the next 12 years, really. And though he was, I was his director, I was also his in-betweener. <laughs> I worked very closely with him. He's wonderful, the wonderful animator, and he was considered the best Warner Brothers animator. I met him in, in an elevator in London with his wife, and, and he came out, and I started laughing. Uh, and he said, yeah, 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 I look like the coyote. Coyote was kind of the roadrunner. Coyote was him, was Ken. And Chuck Jones always used um, Ken Harris to animate the opening thing, the opening shots in the Bugs Bunny or road, whatever it was, and the end stuff. It's like a good actor. You come exits and entrances. Come on strong as you come in, and go on strong as you go out. He started doing this stuff at 37 or 38 years old. He was a car racer and salesman. And his mother said to him in the Depression, why don't you do animation? They're paying a lot of money for that right now. So he took it up, and he was a natural, great athlete and musical. And he, but he couldn't. He said, gee, Dick, if I could draw like you, it would be fun to animate. And I said, well, if I could animate like you, it would be fun to animate. And it is now. During these sessions, I'll be demonstrating many techniques that Ken Harris taught me. Ken knew how to put things in just the right place to make it natural. I got Art Babbitt next, who was my next catch, apart from being the strike leader at Disney. He's one of the very great pioneer animators. Just before the Nine Old Men, he was one of the formulators of a lot of the stuff and inventors of a lot of these devices we'll go through. And he animated uh, Geppetto in Pinocchio. He directed and animated a lot of the clowns in Dumbo. He animated the queen, the evil queen, the beautiful queen in Snow White. He, he kept marrying dancers, Babbitt. Anyway, well, he was a wonderful analyst and a wonderful animator. And he also was a wonderful instructor. We got him for a month. We would have a session like this every morning for a month. And then in the afternoon, we'd try to do the commercial work to pay for it. And then in the evening, we'd do all these tests he demanded us to do. And then he'd critique them the next day and stuff. And it was the most exciting month of my life. And Baba would, he would tell you all the stuff you wanted to know. And out would come all these formulas, devices, and everything. Art was an analyst. We'll be showing some of the pioneer devices that he articulated. He knew how to break things down. Art Babbitt and Ken Harris usually worked at my studio at the same time. 
sometimes along with Grim Natwick, creator of Betty Boop. On one occasion, Art was working on my movie, The Thief, and Ken Harris was working on the titles for The Return of the Pink Panther. When we were doing The Panther, the first one, a guy was making a documentary on The Panther, a 16 millimeter, an American director, and he was sort of doing a PR job, I guess, or just getting material. So he came around to the studio when we were actually just starting to animate the thing, and I'd be doing the drawings for Ken, and Ken would be saying how to do it, and we brought Art in and started to discuss it. Uh, you mean this is too many? Just, yeah, just indeed. Tick, 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 ah, tick, tick. Ah, yeah, that's... Uh, do it in 24. That's interesting. Do it in 24. Yeah. You could do a kind of a double bounce in there, couldn't you? Um, tick, um, oh, that's tick, funny. Tick, um, tick, tick, um, tick, tick. Um, and I'd just like you to notice one thing. He says, when I'm doing a drawing of the tail and the bum, he says, it's a bit too exaggerated, Dick. But that's a better drawing, though, isn't it? I mean, if you get that space. See, I think, uh, to me, it's still a little exaggerated. Sticking there, up there. Kick there. It's a little exaggerated. He hated over-animation. I mean, over-animation, like Tex Avery, is hilarious. But, and it can be very funny today, as some f funny. But Ken said, listen, I, I work's very conservative. I'm too conservative, maybe, but I just don't think it's funny to flash things around all over the place. And of course, that's why his stuff was so funny, that he would keep it very subtle. And when I learned this stuff about loosening things up, I'd be doing his in-betweens. I'd have a hand here, and it would be, Ken would say, cushioning down here, easing down or slowing down. He'd say, I'd put in a drawing here or something, and Ken would say, God damn it, what are you doing? <laughs> so he would he make sure I did it right and and he, he said oh I'm too conservative but I just think it's fun and of course with the roadrunner I mean the coyote when the anvil's falling on his head and the eye just goes like that he can step out of the way but never does and Ken would just it would just go something like this you know some very slight movement and then thud and and the crunched up remains would run away Ken would underplay everything, and of course it made it three times as funny, because you could watch it. I was 36, and my studio had won over 100 international awards. Ken was working with us, and I was learning fast, and I thought I was doing really well. Then I had a massive shock. We went to see the Jungle Book, and I thought, oh, this is going to be pastel Disney, and here, and, and we sit in there, and I see. Yep, here it is, and there's the baby, and the, gonna be adopted by wolves who walk like yeah, government issue stuff or whatever, and not very interesting. And then there's a new cut to Mowgli standing there, and suddenly, and it was kind of a hold, suddenly the proportions changed, and he looked like a real East Indian boy. That was a beautiful drawing. And then it's, and the movements changed, and then the panther comes in and he's looking different and wonderful, and then they start going up the tree, you know that sequence in the tree? And he goes up the tree, and it's a different ball game, completely. And I thought, what's happening? And what was happening was that Milt Call got an extended, started, that was his first drawing of the boy, and then he did this long sequence up with the boy up, and then the, the, the snake comes in. He had a couple of minutes of his own stuff, uninterrupted. And it was only on the Jungle Book, he was getting so irascible, uh, he just said, I want a piece of this, and he just did a 10 minute section. And that just blew me away, I just blew me, I just said, I don't know anything again. Even though I had Ken Harris in captivity, I was about to lasso Art Babbitt to teach us. And I said, I'm hopeless. I don't even know how it's done, let alone ever be able to do it. So the conclusion is you can only get so far on your own. You, gotta, you, gotta, you need the help of a master who knows. You can't reinvent the wheel. You can invent part of the wheel, isn't it? I mean, you can f come in sideways at it in a new way and, you know, but eventually, if you want to get the whole, to have the whole thing, you want to have the whole thing, at least I want to have the whole thing. And that means you've got to, one has to absorb the 
materials developed by these old guys. The formula, even if you don't use the cliches for takes, I'll show you all these Hollywood issue takes and things. Even if you don't ever use them, it's wonderful to know them because then you get a, you have the security of knowing you can you can fall back on a known cliche or a known you know you've got these things that you can use and when they get in the bloodstream because they're principles um because what I'll use stick figures the wonderful thing about using stick figures to show this stuff is that it's devoid of style so you want to get these simple devices of how to do it and do it in stick figure which is very easy to test and see if they work and and uh, absorb the method into your bloodstream and boy in time is this joke the guys putting yogurt in in the, into a lake old Turkish joke or something and and uh, people are all laughing at him and he keeps he's, he's there every morning putting this yogurt into the lake and they just said are you out of your mind he says he says listen just imagine when when and if it takes <laughs> you got a lake of yogurt and, and, and that's, how I've, that's how it was with me. Eventually, these things that I'll, we'll go through, they sort of, six months later, they, it clicks in it's a, you know, into the bloodstream. Clang. Oh, that's why they did that. Oh, you know, and ah, well, I can extend on that. You know, I can push that further. So, so that's the advantage of knowing all this stuff. I'll show you lots of formulas and devices that you can absorb and use and extend on them. But use your ideas, your style, your expression, and your culture. There isn't one way to do this, but what I'm giving you are the tools so that you can make whatever you want. Lesson one. This is uh, very important. Very important. And they always say this will change your life. This lesson one changed my life enormously. So, lesson one. Unplug. <clears throat> Whatever it is, take it out, <laughs> switch it off, close the door, whatever is very necessary. I'm going to act out lesson one because this is how I got it. Oh, I could do a drawing of this. I went to see Milk Call um, and he would, he was a great big guy, that would be his feet. He had uh, incredible concentration his move on to like that, he had a big chin. Well, this is very much like him. This is him. And he had his brains at the end of his pencil, his hand. <laughs> and he always worked with short pens. He seemed to always have a, you know, a pencil. Um, that's him like this. He's this big, tall guy at the Disney desk. And uh, I was sort of, uh, I was thinner. I was something like this. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so I said to him, I, I came in and I said, um, Gee, Milt, because you could stand beside him. He was known for, for um, concentrating so much that people would stand beside him for five, ten minutes. He wouldn't see them. And he had these little pencils, the worn out. And uh, you, you, he, you'd be there. I was there a couple of times. He didn't see you for a long time. And then you'd look up. It was like a laser, his brain connected to the drawing. And I, I said, Oh, excuse me. So he's, he's here. And, he's like, and I said, um, uh, excuse me, Mill. Um, you ever listen to classical music when you're, uh, when, you're, when you're working, animating? And this is what I got. 
for Christ's sake, God damn it, what a fucking stupid question. I'm not smart enough to think of more than one thing at a time. And I said, I, said, I won't do it anymore. And I haven't. Uh, it's very important, especially today. Well, well, it's just very important because immediately you're alone. Immediately you have to think what you're doing, one thing at a time. Immediately your work will double in quality. I don't know about quantity, probably. It's very interesting. Uh, I, from the San Francisco class, uh, we did a couple of the guys in, in Wild Brain, right, computer animators. We went to see them and they said, God, our work is absolutely way better. I mean, Monday morning, it was way better. He said, the only thing is, everybody's laughing at us. They're all plugged in, wired up, and going, ha, ah, ha, what's the matter with you guys? And they said, but, but they all said, whoa, what happened to your work? Really good. So that's lesson one. We go, lesson two. <laughs> Now this is, uh, I'll just give it the heading, Advancing Backwards. To 1940. And we're gonna stay on this for quite a while. The thing is, by, you know, in 1925 when they got, or is it 1928? when they did uh, Mickey Mouse with sound, Steamboat Willie, they had it, uh, you know, they got the amazing thing of the sound with the picture, and Ward Kimball said to me, he said, you have no, he was a little boy when this happened, he said, you have no idea of the impact that that had on the public to see animated films with sound and how powerful it was. They go from that into color in 1931, with flowers and trees. Then 1933, they come out with Three Little Pigs, the first personality animation, where these three little pigs and the wolf all have distinct characters, and they're moving with incredible charm, and they're, they're into character animation. And uh, then they go, and how the hell they ever, it's like the computer thing now, going by leaps and bounds with very intelligent people doing it, they go from 1933 to the end of 36, Snow White is out. So if you have the three little pigs, crude, but everything, you know, working, and they go almost to good illustration, fine illustration almost, in Snow White three years later, or three and a half years later. And absolutely incredible. Then they get to Pinocchio and uh, followed by Fantasia and Dumbo, but, and Reluctant Dragon, but by Pinocchio, 1940, they had the whole thing nailed. They had all the systems worked out. They had, they, the animation, I, could, I guess, is the high point is, is Pinocchio, with that whale, and they can handle huge stuff, little stuff, they can handle everything. And then it stops, because they had the strike, and the war, and blah, 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 and everything fragmented, and it, the golden age was over. So, but they had this beautiful system, where, which is, uh, it's simple. It's, it's uh, I'll just write wonderfully, prof let me just write it. <laughs> wonderfully precise system and simple. It was great minds that took animation from a crude novelty through to a major form of entertainment in just 12 years. This is history. But what they worked out is still just as valid today using all our advanced technology. With these DVDs, I really recommend you start at the beginning and work your way through. Many animators have my book, 
and they use it for reference. I'm doing a sneak, so I'll look it up. But if you take the time, these sessions will save you the years of study that it took me to learn all these principles from the basics through to the interesting, complex, and sophisticated stuff. Remember, you don't know what you don't know.